Here we are then, so it's day five of Frogford Film Festival, and I'm delighted to be joined by the filmmakers behind It's Not About Fear. Would you like to just introduce yourselves, please, and your roles in the film, please? Sure, yeah, um, I'm Kyle, uh, go Kyle Borg. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if the sur uh, surname's necessary, but uh, yeah, I'm, I was the producer of the film. Uh, and I'm Clem, and originally I started off just writing and directing, and for budget reasons, I decided to edit it. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, first of all, where did this idea come from? Can you tell us a little bit about, about that, please? Uh, so this is... It's been kind of uh, bouncing around my head for a, about a year and a half, uh, and I was trying to make sense of, of a particular event uh, that had happened, and I was really struggling to let's say, find the right words to talk about it. Um, and so film is a good form of therapy. And uh, the original draft for this was incredibly wordy uh, with the two people going into too much detail about what had happened to them. And it just, none of it worked. It all felt like using other people's words uh, that I'd read somewhere else or uh, stuff that I found in research, and it just none of it felt right. And then uh, the moment I replaced all of the words by a monster, um, suddenly the experience became more about the feeling and what it's like to have something kind of hover behind you at all times or feel like it's hovering behind you at all times. Um, and it just sort of built from there, really. The second draft is good. <laughs> <laughs> How many drafts did you do? Uh, finished with a good eight. Um, draft four saw the the addition of the second monster, and then after that, we were we were on a good track. Yeah, that was good. Can you tell us specifically about the title? Now, to me, the title was very kind of empowering. Um, what were your kind of thoughts behind the title? Um, so, when this film started out, it was very much about the the experience and the trauma itself. It was about sort of what it's like to live that. Um, and then as it went on, it became clearer that actually, I don't want anyone to have to sit through that. Uh, it's not fun, it's incredibly depressing. So it just kind of naturally veered, just for my own sanity, uh, it kind of veered towards a bit more optimism. Uh, so the, the, the um, Anna's character, Lena, is, is further along the path of recovery and so is capable of bring, to bring this empowerment and optimism and I think it's something we need uh, when we discuss trauma of any kind. We need someone to say, well, you know, it is life altering, but it's not life ending. You, you can have a life after it and it's not about fear. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it just it felt better to just bring optimism into this yeah. that way. I mean, if, if I can just add to that, um, obviously with the effects of with the film, it's it's quite clear with, with the title happening in the beginning. Um, and I know hopefully it gets everyone thinking. And then and then when that when that um, drives in, um, when we when the monster appears and then appears again and then appears again, um, I think the title keeps coming back. Uh, in a certain way. I mean, that's how, how I felt when um, I first read the scripts and how, how I feel now after sort of seeing the film probably for the hundredth time. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think really, really powerful short and just congratulations to you both oh, for it. Thanks. And also for the performers. Can we just talk about them for a minute? How did you find them? How, how much kind of direction did they need? How much rehearsal? <laughs> um, so, a couple of funny stories. So Anna is a very good friend that we've had for a long time, and she is one of the best actors that I know personally. Wonderful. Um, and the more I work with her, the, the more I find that actually she doesn't need direction. She just needs to feel like she can do her thing. That's, that's the way she, it goes with her. She, the more you add, the less good she becomes because she starts to think about it. But when she just exists in the moment, it's really good. So the best takes we get with her were when we do this thing that we, we've started calling the wild take, which is um, where we just tell the actors, all right, forget every direction I've given you, just do your thing. We, we've, we've done four takes of this, I've told you what to do, just, just do your thing. And so most of her performance in this is just wild takes, where she would just live it, and with that elevate Joe's performance on the other side. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, 
she's recently told me that she's retiring from acting and it's really annoying. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's a big loss, but um, Seems a shame. I'll, I'll drag her out of retirement. Yes, it's 100%. fine. Um, and Joe, uh, essentially we lost our lead seven days before the shoot. Um, a part that I'd written for the guy and everything. Um, and Joe, I talked to some years prior about another project that didn't end up happening. And just, we were in a wild panic for a few days. And I messaged him kind of on the off chance. And he said, oh, Thursday, yeah. Yeah, I can make that. And he just came down for three days, um, obviously with very little rehearsal and in a film that is based on a relationship between two people. It's kind of nice to have them meet beforehand, but we couldn't do that. So uh, he came down on the first day of filming, halfway through. She'd already shot some of her stuff. And that first take with them together, I was uh, clenched in every way possible. And then when I called cut, I hear the makeup artist at the monitor going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it worked out okay. <laughs> yeah, I was stress eating a lot that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean it, it, that short just doesn't work unless those two are great, mm. great together. Yeah, that, yeah, it just wouldn't. I don't think it had the same effect. Um, just you mentioned the makeup there. We talk about the makeup, stroke costuming, because I mean, like I said to you this when we met this morning. The first bit, or one, maybe one of the other cuts, a little bit longer on watching it again. There's a bit where it literally cuts it, and I audibly, I mean, it takes quite a lot to make me jump. Like, I watch a lot of horror films, that things don't usually make me jump, but I actually went, ah, like that. It actually had a quite visceral effect on me. Can we just talk a little bit about the costume and makeup? First of all, thank you. That makes me incredibly happy. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, that was, I love monsters. Yeah. I love making them. I, love, I like watching them. I like designing them. Um, and this one was very, it was strange because it was about trying to find a way of um, making a monster on the cheap. We all know that's a pain. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to find a way of making something that wouldn't take away from the, the actual emotional stuff that was happening on screen. We had to find something that wasn't too much of a distraction. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of left it up to my production designer and makeup artist, and um, they were both really on the ball makeup artist we hire her and two days later she sends us a perfect test with a glove that she'd made yeah and she just goes what do you think about this you know she's doing the movement with the fingers that are way too long it was just we're like, okay well i guess we're fine um that's one massive stress off our list and then on set uh paul rebecca who's in in the, the actual prosthetics and makeup uh was functionally blind for oh, yeah. all of it, because we, we thought the contacts only removed part of the vision. Turns out they removed all of the vision. Um, and so Kyle was shepherding her for most of the shoot. I don't know. I, well, obviously, credit will go most certainly to Jade Harding, who's our makeup artist, and Jessica Jones, who's our production designer. I mean, they've worked as, like, as a team, and they've done it um, uh, you know, a couple times for us already before, and they're fantastic. Um, in terms of shepherd, shepherding around uh, Rebecca, um, she, she obviously once once she got the contact lenses in, and we we we've got like three four hours to shoot with her monster bits. She can't walk around anywhere, so um, we had two people a lot of by um, by her at all times, trying to make sure that we. If she's if she's standing up to make sure she's not going to fall over, but not sure, make sure she can walk around the space okay, um, and uh, also feeding her as well, which she can't she, she couldn't use her hands. So um, uh, she liked bourbons, so we we gave her yeah. bourbons and and um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> young ones. Yeah, um, she was stood on a box for most of it. I so, you, as you can imagine, she yeah, tall, she, she, she's, she's, yeah, she's she's pretty regular height, wow. but yeah. but stood on the box meant we had like there's some of the shots where she stood in front of Joe on the box, looking down at him. Obviously, she had to be told where to look because she had no idea. And Kyle is literally crouched behind her. Like, if she falls. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, and she had the best time out of all yeah, of us. Yeah. In, in spite of being completely blind and sitting in the makeup chair for an hour, she was having a blast because she could hear people reacting to her. And I was freaking out. I, I, when I, the, every shot where she just turned her head, 
I had, you, you could hear gasps, and the lead at some point said, Clem, do I have to look at her? Because it's, <laughs> it's a bit, it's difficult. And yeah. that's where I knew it was probably going to work. Yeah. Um, if, if you scare your lead actor with your monster, it probably means, it's probably a good sign. Is there any um, questions from the audience at this moment? Put your hands up, and uh, one might come up to you. Well, I think. Um, I've got one other question. Um, what moment are you most proud of, uh, of this of this film? Um, I mean, I think for for me, um, it would be it would be the the, the final final act. I said it's it's the moment when they walk into the living room, and uh, Anna points out her monster. And it, it's that moment there. I think Anna's performance is fantastic, uh, and and Joe's performance as well is fantastic in that moment. It, it's just it's just um, it's what what the piece is sort of about. And um, you know that took a, took a lot of drafts and a lot of mm. lot of working with uh, for us. But being able to to get the team together to be able to um, do, that was the last that, that was the last scene we shot. So, so it all culminated on, into that, and the crew were were really ready, and um, everyone was in good spirits, and and we just we, we shot that scene, and I remember it flying by those those moments. So, um, and seeing them in in the edit, I think it's it's what works best in the film, personally. So yeah, my I mean my my per personal favorite moment is in that act. It's the um, it's when. They're calming down, or she's managed to calm him down again, and she just takes his hand mm. and asks, is this okay? Yeah. And it just takes its time, and they both just really just lived in that for a bit. I just, I, I kind of cried on <laughs> set, it was fine. Um, and yeah, I just, let's say things so. I like that. And just, we reintroduced sort of a different way of talking to someone who's going through something and trying to find a way of, uh, yeah, they, they're trying to find a way to communicate differently. And it's it just felt lovely and optimistic, and it worked. Yeah. It was the insert on the hand, um, was that uh, on the shot? I can't, I can't remember if that was something we got on no. fly. Yeah. And the AD hated me for that. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> Yeah. Any <laughs> yeah. Um, questions? Yep. Um, um, yeah, I, so, hmm. <laughs> the, without having to be too explicit about this, um, I liked the idea, it, it, it's about sexual assault. Let's go with that. Um, and you, you get the traditional expectation, which is, okay, ma man on woman violence. Cool. It's there. Brilliant. But I liked, I wanted to see the other thing. I wanted to see that reversal of gender where suddenly the man who's also, you know, he's a pretty standard looking bloke. He's, uh, he's, not, he's not a tiny little twig who you can imagine being overpowered easily or something like that. He's just a guy. He's any guy. And, you know, that's how he perceived his assailant is she kind of looks like that to him now. Um, and yeah, it was, it was just important to have that. I just, it felt, I hadn't seen that before or enough. And I just wanted to sort of give it a try. Any other hands? Very quiet. <laughs> um, what are you guys working on next? Yeah. Um, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, we've got another short that we're making in um, October. in October uh, yeah. that we're working towards um, a bit more uh, a bit more shooting outside and um, uh, on a moving vehicle as well, which is going to mm. be very fun. Um, <laughs> Some of it. Yeah, some of it. But uh, it's it's meant to be a bit cheerier than this. Yes. Um, I was kind of tired of exploring uh, traumatic things via <laughs> horror. So instead, uh, I'm doing a... It's, it's a short about a guy investigating whether the buses on his bus line are actually disappearing or they're just late. <laughs> 
that's the way I put it. Well, yeah. And so, there's slightly more fun. There's there's a, a a key relationship in the middle of it as well, which which like this one um, is being affected by by his investigation. Um, and I'm going to drag Anna out of, out of retirement for this. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for sharing um, not only the film, but your kind of thoughts behind it, and thank you for coming. And yeah, I just thought it was such a fantastic piece of work. I thought it was so unique in the way it was telling its story, such a different kind of way of doing it. So thank you and congratulations. Have a round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thanks, guys.